Stop working for others. The job market is heading for another tough winter. Finding a job this year, it's really hard. Many say this is the toughest year in history for job hunting. Truly, for every single position, there are a hundred candidates. Just look at Foxconn's wages and you'll have an idea. Without exaggeration, this has become a reality. 2023 is a challenging year for both companies and job seekers. Japan's Toshiba urgently withdraws its 33 factories, resulting in 400,000 job losses in China. 600,000 people in Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Dongguan can't find jobs. Apple's top five OM factories are not receiving orders and three of them have gone bankrupt. The job market is indeed facing another cold spell. The gentleman in the video highlights that the withdrawal of foreign companies has had a significant impact on China's employment market. The surplus of job applicants has resulted in suppressed wages, and he emphasizes how tough this year has been for China's job market. As foreign companies leave China, the yuan loses its primary support. On August 14, the yuan exchange rate plummeted. The offshore rate dropped to 7.29, the lowest since early November of the previous year. The onshore rate also fell to 7.26, its lowest since the end of June, down by 275 points. More and more economic data indicates that China's economy is in a vicious cycle. Bloomberg's analysis suggests that China's economy is faltering, with little effective stimulus, leaving the yuan almost unsupported amidst a resurgent dollar. Analysts believe that due to China's economic data for July falling short of market expectations, the yuan has continued to weaken. Among the indicators, bank loans hit a 14-year low, both consumer and producer prices declined, and exports saw the biggest drop since February 2020. Since China's reforms and opening up in 1978, global corporations have invested hundreds of billions of dollars in China, buying and building factories to gain market access and cheap labor. These investments have long supported the yuan. Last quarter, foreign direct investment shifted from a slow decline to a sharp drop. Capital flowing into China reached its lowest level in 25 years, indicating a fundamental shift in the long-term trend of foreign investment. According to Reuters, three informed sources stated that Tyson Foods, America's largest meat supplier, plans to sell its poultry business in China, becoming the latest example of a multinational company planning to divest from China. Two informed sources reveal that the company has engaged Goldman Sachs Group to provide advice on the sale and has sent preliminary information to several potential buyers, including some private equity firms. They added that the sale process is still in its early stages. While the valuation of Tyson Foods' poultry business in China remains unclear, one of the sources mentioned that the annual sales of the poultry operation in China stand at around 1.1 billion USD. According to the official website of Tyson Foods China, Tyson Foods opened its first factory in China in 2001. The company currently has four research and development centers, several processing plants, and dozens of farms in China. They operate a full industry chain in China, spanning from farming, slaughtering, to processing and distribution, offering chicken, beef, pork, and a variety of processed foods. Bankers have noted that in recent years, many multinational corporations have struggled to achieve desired profits in China due to the country's slowing economic growth, intense local competition or escalating geopolitical tensions. As a result, many have divested their business in China or reduced their holdings. In May, American agriculture giant Cargill reached an agreement to sell its poultry business in China to private equity firm DCP Capital, though the terms of the deal were not disclosed. Reckitt Bankiza, a British consumer goods manufacturer, sold its infant formula and children's nutrition business in China to investment firm Primavera Capital Group for 2.2 billion USD in 2021. Dutch dairy company Friesland Campina hoped to sell its Friso infant nutrition brand in December 2021 but has yet to find a buyer. In July 2022, the company sold an infant formula milk powder factory in China to local company Yiling Group based in Inner Mongolia. Data from China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange, SAFE, indicates that foreign direct investment, FDI, slowed to just under 4.9 billion USD in the second quarter, a year-on-year -year decline of 87%. This marks the most significant drop since records began in 1998. Chinese enterprises overseas investments have remained steady, leading to a record net direct investment deficit of 34.1 billion USD. 
Beijing's strict zero COVID policy over the past three years has significantly undermined businesses' confidence in Chinese commercial environment. These measures have disrupted the manufacturing sector and supply chain ecosystems. The Chinese Communist Party's regulatory crackdown on certain industries, coupled with sudden inspections on American consulting firms, has caused anxiety among international enterprises, making them wonder when and where they might be targeted next. Executives and consultants from international companies have noted that the investment landscape is shifting. The risks presented by political considerations behind investment decisions are not only concerning but are also long-term. This change threatens the yuan with the increasing loss of foreign investment, a stalwart supporter of the currency for a long time. John Ramig, a shareholder at Butchalter, a law firm specializing in international business transactions and manufacturing structures, stated. I don't have a single client wanting to invest in China, not one. Ramig added, "Everyone wants to sell off their Chinese operations, or if they previously sourced products from China, they are now looking elsewhere." This is a stark contrast from just five years ago. Analysts from the Oxford Economics Institute argue that new investments generate new capacities. Therefore, the influx of new funds best reflects forward-looking prospects. The total foreign investment amount had decreased from about 100 billion per year from 2010 to 2011 to 18 billion in 2022. This decline in new investment over multiple years reflects investors' mindset. Logan Wright, director of China market research at Rhodium Group, commented: "Historically, if there's an annual fiscal surplus ranging from 5 billion to 100 billion." Fluctuation in foreign direct investment wouldn't significantly impact the domestic currency exchange rate. Wright emphasized, however, when national finances shift into a deficit, as is currently the case, it introduces a substantial change. There's already pressure on the yuan to devalue. The latest data from China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange shows that since the beginning of the year, the amount of U.S. dollars used for overseas investment purchased through Chinese banks has consistently surpassed the amount international companies spent on buying yuan for investments within China, leading to a net outflow of U.S. dollars for six consecutive months. Data from China's Ministry of Commerce also reflects this trend. Showing that in the first five months of this year, actual foreign direct investment decreased by 5.6 percent month on month, marking the largest decline in three years. The data indicates that a significant number of companies are deciding to withdraw or refrain from increasing their capacities in China, setting the tone for capital flow in the coming years. Lee Smith, a global trade attorney at Baker and Donaldson, commented: "The political climate is pushing Western companies away from China." The benefits of investing in China no longer outweigh the potential risks. Smith added, "Many of our clients are concerned about the risks associated with relying solely on China as a supplier. Mistrust of China's degree of opening up has also hampered investments. When the American Chamber of Commerce in China polled its members regarding their confidence in China's commitment to further opening up in the next three years, only 34 percent expressed confidence, down from 61 percent two years ago." In a bid to stabilize the yuan, two insiders informed Reuters and Chinese regulators are urging some commercial banks to reduce or postpone their U.S. dollar purchases, attempting to curb the depreciation trend of the yuan. These insiders mentioned that suppressing non-essential demand for U.S. dollars might alleviate some of the direct pressures facing the yuan. Goldman Sachs stated in a report that while authorities might take action to slow down the yuan's depreciation, considerable resistance remains, anticipating the currency will stay weak. As foreign investments increasingly pull out of China, the Chinese government is urgently trying to reverse the economic downturn. On August 13, the Chinese State Council introduced 24 measures to attract foreign investment. These suggestions call for increasing efforts to attract foreign investment. Ensuring national treatment for foreign-funded enterprises, strengthening protections for foreign investments, increasing fiscal and tax support, and boosting foreign investor confidence. The specific approach of the 24 measures includes supporting foreign-funded enterprises to establish research and development centers in China, guaranteeing their participation in government procurement activities, and providing various conveniences for employees and their families. However, Beijing's urgent measures to save the economy seems contradictory to some of the policies implemented earlier this year. 
according to a survey released by the European Union Chamber of Commerce in China in June. Due to regulatory measures and political factors, European companies' confidence in China's businesses' environment plummeted. Three quarters of the firm have reconsidered their supply chain strategies, with 12% indicating they've withdrawn part of their business from China. Following the enforcement of China's foreign relations law and the revised counter espionage law on July 1st, U.S. authorities advise citizens to reconsider traveling to China to avoid arbitrary enforcement by Chinese authorities, exit bans, and wrongful detentions. The Associated Press report that due to plunging investment confidence resulting from China's newly revised counter espionage law expanding the definition of espionage activities and other challenges, foreign companies are increasingly moving their investment and Asia quarters out of China. The official Chinese advocacy of public reporting of spies further deters foreign investors. One month after the counter espionage law took effect, China's National Security Department issued a public mobilization order on WeChat on August 1st, urging citizens to report spies and promising rewards for valid reports. Harris, a partner at Harris Brickens, a law firm that offers consultation services for investing in China, told the Wall Street Journal about China's recent investigations into Western due diligence firms and other companies, including sudden raids on global consulting firms like Bain and Co. He said that people won't go to China unless absolutely necessary. As for the effectiveness of the Chinese government's 24 measures, Taiwanese financial expert Huang Shichong analyzed: for foreign businesses, it's merely another document with no substantial attraction. Huang explained that foreign businesses leave China for several reasons. The first is the trade friction between China and the U.S., followed by a series of U.S. policies leading many foreign businesses to leave China. The second reason is the enactment of China's new counter espionage law and the crackdown on free speech, leading to frequent arrests. Huang commented candidly: several factors have led to the mass exodus of foreign investment from China. So, will these new policies help? What genuine foreign investors really care about are, firstly, the state of Sino-U.S. relations, and secondly, if they go there, will they have personal and financial freedom? Furthermore, Huang added, as China's foreign exchange control becomes stricter, foreign investment in China cannot obtain the necessary guarantees.